And he said it, it might be interesting to you know showcase some of the results, and it's, it's only going to take five to six minutes. Uh, so we did conduct studies, as I mentioned earlier, with uh, you know, children with ASD, and some of the results. And again, it's, it's very very quick, very brief, and you know five seconds video just to show you how it's possible to conduct those studies in the classroom and some of the impact, some of the magic, or some of the joy that you see on the kids' faces. Really? So again, what I said, you know, it can be a very scary place. And now, or I'm sure any, you know, even a robot could do that. Many kids want to come to school every day. And if you look at some of these pictures, and I shared this one with you earlier. So, and, and again, it's, you see the joy in their faces. And of course, we don't know everything about you know, what makes it so magical. So again, that's a picture. Now was in there. He sent a picture of him when he was in the classroom. So he sent it. And it, it's all a trick between the teacher and ourselves and all that. But the idea, the kids were happy. So they were happy like, because the robot, they don't have the resources, is going to come back in two weeks from now. So impacts both when the robot is there and when it's not. And what the robot did, he, the teacher said, well, they need it. <laughs> and he was going to, you know, share the envelope. The teacher said, no, no, hold on, hold on. And just look at the next video. So the kids received an envelope, like we supposedly mailed it, and snail mail, so from the robot now itself. So look at their faces, and it's it's in French, but the joy is the joy is in any language. So see the, what I, the the idea is really the joy, you know, it's in any language. So impact both at school and after school. That's a Facebook page, not from ourselves, but we're not be allowed. That's one of the mother of one of the, he's, uh, he's eight on the picture. And she did put on a Facebook page because she's looking for help, because she doesn't know what to do sometimes. And she, she said, uh, and again, you can use Google Translate, he was never as happy as that at school. And again, he, he can't, you know, he wants to go to school now, he wants to learn, he talks about the robot all the time. But look at this other kid here for his birthday. He wanted the robot on top of the cake. So should the mom said she had to come up with something. So all those, so it's not only at school, it's outside of the school as well. So you mentioned earlier the idea of transition, a scary event, event. Again, now as an impact on that. And what we saw in our, in our research is that the kids are happy. They're happy when the robot is not there. They come up with pictures. But again, the teachers, they play a key role there because there's a link when the robot is there, when it's not, and what you do with the robot. So all these things happen because the teachers are there. Oh, it's asking me to go online for some reason, but don't worry. Um, so, and again, all these things, the kids are less scared, but the social skills, they improve also when they talk to each other as well, not only when they talk to the robot. So reading skills, we had now asking, the, you know, starting to read a book to kids, and he said, I'll come back next week. Can you tell me what's going on in the book? All the kids, we had to purchase books for every single kid because the teacher said, well, they all wanted to read the book that day. You know, that way tomorrow, until tomorrow. So all the kids, you know, wanted to read and the book exists in, you know, Dragon Ball Tacos. But it's, it's a good book for kids with ASD. Why? Because you have to memorize things. You have to memorize the order. And you also have to memorize what happens when you put hot sauce to a, you know, the taco that's given to a dragon. You know, you, you can imagine and all that. So the kids were so happy. And again, they said, merci, thank you. And they, they, they sent thank you notes to the robot. The ro so the robot doesn't have to be there all the time. Writing skills as well. Now what he does, he's sending a letter to the kids. Okay, the kids, what do they do? They're six, seven, eight, nine. You know, and their writing skills are, you know, you know, vary, I would say. So the teacher comes up with the template and all the kids are writing to now. So math skills as well, impact on memory and recall skills as well. You know, he's telling them a story that's individual sessions. And again, what happened first, second, third, and all that. So all these skills can be, you know, done or increased when the robot is there. Physical education as well. Touch your head, do this, do that. Some of the kids didn't like to move before. Now they're all dancing together when the robot is there. That's the tai, now tai Chi dance and all that, playing soccer with the robot, uh, geography and all that. And we, we really had fun because we are now going to Africa. He didn't really go to Africa, by the way, just like, you know, use technology. So he's telling his trip with, because they were learning about baby animals and all that. So he's officially he went to Africa, you know, pictures of the pirates and all these. So impact on science and what do they do? They learn some things and they use technology themselves to, you know, to communicate with the robot, you know. Uh, what they did, they create, they used Spark, and they created videos. To, that's really too loud. So they cre he created a video explaining 
which animal it chose and why it chose it and why it, what it is the animal eating and all that. So now it tells them stories about dog because you know the kid said, Do you have a dog? And we didn't know what to do. Of course she has a dog. And then eventually he said, Do you have a girlfriend? So you have to bring a second now, you know, wearing a pink shirt because you know so all these things are, are good for you know or, or I, did, I don't know why, but some of the teachers told us I didn't. They didn't like to do art. I didn't even know why. So again, she's using now as an excuse for them to create, you know, all sorts of collage and you know artwork. Why? Because now is there. So again, it's an excuse. So cooking skills, so many, so many skills. And I think you mentioned your son. As a, you said, as he likes to code. What was really impressive also is that some of these kids, you know, we went, you know, even further. They started to code the robot itself. So. We took away some of the magic there. We said it's not that magical, but you can get the robot to do some things. And they were so good, it's unbelievable. When you, again, internet thing is asking me something. And it's really, really magical when you trust the kids and you give them the tools as well to, you know, to program the robot itself. It's really, really amazing. So what we did, simply put, we created, you know, 10 levels and we gave them wristbands. And we thought we would after the whole year with that. You know, it took them like one and a half months, and they were all done. It was like, okay, now we have to do more levels. So, so many, so many things, the kids. And what did they get the robot to do? That yeah, and stuff. Of course. Of course like, you know, nothing that we find, you know. So, anyway, so all, all that, you know, I know it's a lot of work because preparing those individual or group sessions takes a lot of time. But it's really, and if you look at, you know, how we worked it out, you know, that the program sometimes we're using for individual and group sessions. But I think it's all worth it. When you see, as Dr. Crow mentioned, I don't know where she is right now, but when she mentioned that, you know, the joy that you see, even if it's only for one, I think it's really worth it. So we did not want, we had like 13 kids there in that classroom. It was really